Hi, this is John with The Evolving World. Today I'm doing a video on how to do a rear alignment on a Chevrolet Bolt EV. So you may have uh, heard that this car has a non-adjustable suspension, officially from the factory, that is. So that works in, in the favor of GM, because if your car does get out of alignment, as it will eventually, sooner or later, their solution is you simply replace the suspension. You replace all the parts that are bent out of shape. Now, that's not very cost-feasible, in my opinion, and I don't think uh, many other people find that very cost-feasible either. I mean, it benefits GM, but it doesn't really do anything for, for people that just want to simply do a f alignment, you know, because alignment is usually never bent out of shape too bad. Now, if it was totally destroyed, if it was totally bent out of shape beyond repair, then yes, you would replace it. But in this particular case, we have a car that's out of alignment, and just a little bit, but we want to put it back in the spec, because we want a safe... Uh, optimally running vehicle. So that's what we're going to be doing here today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do is make sure you're parked on a nice smooth flat surface. Now a lot of times garage floors appear to be smooth and flat but that's not necessarily true. So I've just done a little check here with my level and I found out that this is actually sloping a slight amount. Five eighths of an inch over five foot six. So it's a little bit under an eighth of an inch per foot. So it's something that we'll take into account. And here's the tools we're going to be using to take our measurements. All you need is a two foot level, a block with some string on it, and a ruler. So something like this I find works really, really well. Something that's really precise. This one has metric as well as inches. Next step is to check the camber. So it's pretty easy to do. We're going to be using our level here. And our, and our ruler. Basically, it's very simple. You just have to take your two foot level, place it like so. Make sure there's no interference with the wheel. These are aftermarket wheels, so a little bit different than the factory rims. But just make sure there's no interference in here. Make sure you have a nice flat contact points right there. Now, this car has a little bit of a bulge at the bottom of the tire. Most, most times there's going to be a little bit of a bulge right there. What you can do is you could take a measurement point from the outside of the rim here to the outside of the rim. That would be even more accurate. Or you could just take it from the tire, which is what I'm going to do, to the edge of the tire. And what we're going to do is um, just compensate for that. Subtract it. I think it's about two millimeters in this case. It's not too much. Not too much of a bulge in this tire. So now what you do is you simply just, uh, you can brace your knee right here. It works really well. It's a good technique. And then all you have to do is basically make your level level. So read the bubble. And when we see that it's level, in this case, that's about level right there. So now all you have to do, I'm not going to be able to do it here because I'm holding the camera, but what you do is you measure, take that measurement right there. What is that distance between that level to your tire? and you know, to the rim, depending on which place you're going to measure at. In this particular case, I've already done it, it's uh, about 24 millimeters, or about an inch. And now we're on the other side. Make sure your bubble is nice and level. And take your reading right there. This, this side looks to be about a half an inch, or about, what is that, 13 millimeters or so, 12 millimeters. And that's from tire to tire. So now that we have all of our measurements, from here up to here is 20.5 inches, and then we came out one inch, and so we were able to find the angle based off of those two numbers. So on this particular car, the specifications calls for negative 0.9 to negative 1.9 degrees, and that's what it should be. So anything more than that is too much, anything less than that is too little. So in this particular case, this works out to be negative 2.8. So we're off by quite a lot here. That is pretty massive, actually. And then on this side over here, this was only a half an inch difference there, so it was half the distance. So that works out to be negative 1.4. So this one is actually not only in spec, but it's perfectly in spec. So there's absolutely nothing to adjust there whatsoever. So that one is how it's supposed to be, and then this one is, as I suspected, this is the, the culprit right here. This is the one that's out of spec. So, 
The next thing is, let's go ahead and uh, fix this, put this back into spec. Next, using a 19 millimeter socket and a breaker bar, you want to go ahead and loosen the lug nuts on the car when it's down on the ground. And then, after that, you're going to want to go ahead and lift it up. The good jacking point is the center line of the beam axle, right here as shown. Make sure that your car is resting on the jack stands at the proper location. There's a nice frame rail location right here that I'm using. I'm going to go down here and show you where it's at. So that's a good location right there on both sides. Once it's secure, then you can go ahead and lower it down on the jack stands. Now you're ready to go ahead and take off our wheel right here. Now that the wheel is off, we have pretty good access to the back here. So what we're trying to do is there's a there's a little stub axle that's attached to our beam axle and what we're doing is we're going to separate the two here. So it's attached with four 15 millimeter bolts right here. I find a good technique is to use a floor jack to support the shock absorber underneath of it because what's going to happen is when you loosen that, that bolt up, which is an 18 millimeter bolt actually, which is kind of an oddball size, once you remove that bolt what's going to happen is this. You're going to have it, it's going to come down, so you want to release, you want to keep that pressure by having the jack underneath of it so that you can pull that bolt out relatively easily without stripping it. So there'll probably be a lot of tension underneath of it, so that's what you want to do. There we go. Now we should be able to just lower the jack down, like so, and that releases the pressure. And now our spring should be able to just pull right off. So you have to put both hands on it at the top. And it will just barely clear here. Just so there's the little upper rubber bushing is rubbing up against here. So you have to kind of pull down as much as you can. And pull outwards and it comes right out. So just barely a little bit of clearance in there. So now we have full access to what we want to get to now. We can get to all of our bolts now. From this angle you can see all the four bolts right there. So now what you want to do is you want to loosen those up. They come out relatively easily. You have good access to it now. There's no Loctite on it or anything, which is kind of nice. Uh, other cars I've worked on in the past, which I care not to mention, were really cumbersome and difficult to get out. You had to use a special bit, and then it was a shitload of uh, thread lock on there. It made it almost impossible to get the things out. On this car, none of that nonsense. We've got just regular bolts. They they come out relatively uh, easily. They're not even torqued all down all that hard. They're probably maybe 50 pounds, maybe 40 pounds of torque is all it takes to get them free. And then they just come right out. And now we're looking at it from the top. So we're gonna be taking these two bolts out right here. I'll loosen them up right now. We're gonna take these completely off. And so if you notice what's happening here is our stub axle is now loosened up from the from the beam axle. So just our little end end axle is loose now. So if you haven't figured it out by now, you might be figuring it out pretty soon. So now that we have this free and clear, all we really have to do is take off these top these top two bolts here. Since this is going to be just a straight camber change, nothing else. Toe is okay. We don't have to change the ones on the side or anything. We just have to pull these guys out. So now let me talk a little bit about the shims we're going to be using. Um, these are some shims that I've used in the past. These are nice uh, quality shims. Stainless steel, 0.25 millimeter. Super thin shims. Now, I found from, from doing this in multiple projects of the past that if you put in just one of these shims on the two uppermost bolts, that, that would change our, our camber about an, a quarter of a degree. Just this tiny little thing here. That's all it takes to move it a quarter of a degree. So these are great for when you want to precisely dial in our numbers. But in this particular case, since we're dealing with, we need a 1.5 degree change, we're gonna need six of these guys. So we're gonna need six of them times two, for six for each of the uppermost bolts. So that means we're gonna be using 12 of these things. So I started to think about, well, you know, these things are kind of expensive. They're, they're great for, for, for fine tuning. You know, you wanna use just one of these, you know, or two of them. You don't wanna use six of them. So I started looking around the house here and just looking around at some other washers that I have and I found some of these. These are just good old fashioned cheap 
plain steel washers. Um, this is something you get from Home Depot or Lowe's or any of your favorite hardware store. Three eighths. Got a hundred of them. And I uh, already had those in stock here. So it's like it turns out that they actually are about the same size almost exactly. I took the micrometer to it and found out that it is almost exactly the same. It's something just maybe slightly more than six but less than seven is what this one works out to be. So, so I think we found our solution here. So we got just two of these. These are probably 25 cents a piece. So probably for 50 cents here, we can pretty much do our job. If we use these, these are like 70, 80 cents a piece or something like that. It's a piece times 12. So, you know, we'd be 15 bucks or, so, or no, what would that be? 12 bucks, something like this. Pretty significant amount of money here uh, going that way. It's not, it's not going to be necessary. Plus, the hole is bigger than it needs to be. This one actually fits our bolt. Really. This is our bolt right off our car. So, it actually fits this one really nicely. So, 3 eighths is about the same as a 15 millimeter washer here. So, you can see that there's not much slack or anything. So, that's going to fit really nicely, I think, for our application. It makes it real easy, too, because it's just one shim. So, that's what we're going to be doing using these washers as shims and this should get us about 1.5 1.6 degree change of angle and it should get our camber back into spec so as far as inserting our shims it's a little bit of a tricky process I find that using two screwdrivers tightening up the other three bolts and then just focusing on a one at a time and basically leaving just enough gap there for a shim depending on what size it is to gently be able to just put it in place because you don't want to have it too loose because it will just you'll lose it you'll, it will just fall down and you'll have to start all over again so we got this one in where we have the other three tightened up now we've got our washer we basically have placed it in there and then you just kind of have to move, maneuver it around it looks like we're, we're clear here on this side and it's not too we have enough friction on the thing as it is that it's not going to fall down so now we can take our bolt here as so, gently put it in here, hopefully, there we go, and now we'll be able to just tighten, tighten that down here, and here's what they look like installed, we've done this one right here, and then this one right here, Next step is to tighten these down to spec, which is 43 foot-pounds. We want to do this in a star pattern. The next step is to reinstall our springs. I find that a good technique is to start at the bottom here, and there's already a bushing in place. You basically turn it clockwise about a, about a full rotation, and then from there, you just simply press this in place. There's just enough room for this to go in. Once we've got that in, the next step here is to go ahead and lift up our suspension opposite of how we took it apart so we'll just basically use our jack like so and this is just to get it lined up with our our shock right here so GM recommends that you tighten it 74 pounds 74 foot pounds the first pass and then you come back later and it hit it with a 30 degree angle so I don't know exactly how to how to interpret that but that's what they that's what the instructions say <clears throat> 74 first pass second pass 30 degrees so I guess that's just to make sure that it doesn't just loosen up a little bit it ends up being probably around 80 or something but anyway that's about where we're at so these guys are installed so let's go ahead and put our wheels back on okay, so our car is back down on the ground I pushed on the shock absorbers a little bit on the back suspension just to kind of make sure it's settled Everything looks pretty good. I can clearly see there's a noticeable difference here. Let's go ahead and take the actual number here. Okay, there's our number right there. It looks like we're at about 12, 13 millimeters or so. So that came out better than expected. That's right where we want to be. That's equal with the other side. But now that our rear alignment is correct as far as camber, the next thing we want to do is we want to check our toe and make sure that that's correct. Usually the back suspensions are pretty good at keeping their toe. It's usually the camber is the one that goes out. So that's why we do the camber first. So since we have that correct now, let's go ahead and check our toe. Now the first thing we're gonna have to do before we do that 
is actually uh, we have to check our camber on the front as well. Because if the camber's out on this one, it, it messes up our, our string relationship to the front to back. Now we're ready to go ahead and take our toe measurement for the rear suspension. So what you want to do is you want to put your string and your blocking and get it as high as you can on the front wheel, like so. Also, you want to make sure that your steering wheel is straight and true, as it would as it was before, as it was driving down the road. And then you want to come back here, take your string. You want to note what the height is. Um, you want to get it as high as you can, but not too high. You don't want to be above the center or axle. There's going to be bodywork that's going to interfere. And plus, if the wheel has protrusions on it, like this one does, you want to make sure to avoid those protrusions. So it's this wheel has a kind of a, it's actually the highest spot is right here. So we want to avoid that high spot there. Otherwise that will cause interference. So it looks like we're about maybe four or five inches off the ground over there. So we want to be about the same over here. But we're touching the rim right there. So we don't want to be touching the rim. So get it right about, there we go. Make sure there's no interference on the wheel. And then you just want to make sure that your string is pulled tight against the tire. You can use your knee to brace it. This particular car works well with the string alignment because the track is identical. The front is identical to the back as far as the width. So that's the key point here. Some cars do not have the same width. The track is bigger in the back or it's bigger in the front and then this and then on those particular cars this particular method does not work very good but on this car it works great so that's why we do it we really want to have all four wheels going down the road true and straight there should be an equal contact point at the tire on all four locations so this particular location back here which is right here and then this particular location should also be the same it should be contacting and then it should be doing the same in the front at all at two locations in the front. So that would that would symbolize that it's running true and straight down the road with zero de zero degree toe on the front and the rear. So here on this particular wheel, you can see right here that we have a tiny little bit of gap, but it's very very close, and that's probably going to be that's probably going to work out pretty good for us. It looks like we got maybe about a about a millimeter. That's it. So what does that translate into degrees? So it's easy. So what you do is you take your measurement from where the string is contacting both tires, which in this case is about 17 inches. You use that line as a reference point. Then you just go in one millimeter in and then draw a line backwards and that, that's how you get your degree. So I did this on CAD. That's how, what I'm describing here. So what it ends up being, the simple way of saying it, would be one millimeter gap means about 0.13 degrees of angle and then on the other side we had two millimeters which was about 0.27 degrees of angle so as you as I mentioned before this car the specification is negative 0.2 to positive 0.4 so that means that our car is right here is in spec so that's Excellent news. That means we don't have to do any more further adjustment here. We know it's in spec, so everything is good. Now, if your car is out of spec, the procedure is basically the same as we did for the camber, except that instead of doing the two top bolts, you would do either the two front bolts or the two back bolts, depending on whether you're toe in or toe out. The final step is to tighten your lug nuts on your wheels. Make sure that they're tightened to 103 foot-pounds. And you might also make sure you go in a star pattern, like so. Once you got that done, go ahead and drive it for 100 miles, come back, check it again, and retighten if you need to. And then that's it. And that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe if you did. Many more videos to come.